As their letters show, Napoleon was love-struck. Josephine? Not so much. Yet even with affairs on both sides, a deep attachment grew and endured. The relationship between Napoleon Bonaparte and his wife, Josephine de Beauharnais, has been hailed as a love affair for the ages, but it was anything but a perfect picture of selfless devotion. While it's true that the French leader's countless letters to Josephine overflow with intense declarations of infatuated love, their relationship was marred by frequent adultery and their marriage ultimately ended in divorce. Josephine, whose real name was Marie-Joseph Rose Tachère de la Pagerie, Napoleon gave her the name Josephine based on her middle name, had grown up on a plantation in the French Caribbean colony of Martinique. When she was in her teens, her family married her off to a minor French noble, Alexandre de Beauharnais, a philanderer whose multiple affairs resulted in the couple's court-ordered separation. Although Alexandra found political success, becoming president of the National Constituent Assembly, he could not escape the state-sanctioned violence of the French Revolution's reign of terror and was guillotined in 1794. Josephine, who had also been imprisoned, barely missed being guillotined due to the timely fall of Robespierre. Released from the Calms prison, Josephine was a 32-year-old widowed mother of two, without access to her family funds, and with a set of rotting teeth. She needed to secure her future, and so quickly arranged for loans from various quarters to install herself in an apartment on the Rue Chantraine, where, as French historian Frédéric Masson writes in his book Napoléon et les Femmes, she hoped for some kind of miracle to rescue her from her state. Her concerted campaign to launch herself into the new post-revolutionary French society clearly worked. After a series of affairs with a number of senior political figures, she became the lover of Napoleon's powerful mentor, Paul Barras, part of the nation's five-person leadership coalition called the Directoire. However, by 1795, Barras had tired of his mistress and happily introduced her to the ambitious young soldier at a society ball he hosted. Little did Barras know that four years later, that soldier would rise to power in a bloodless coup against the Directoire, and that five years after that, he would crown himself emperor. Josephine did not immediately take to the prospect of Napoleon as a husband, allegedly calling him a puss in boots and sniffing at his lower-class family of beggars, writes Adam Zamoyski, author of Napoleon, A Life but he showered her with gifts and won over her children with his playfulness. The two married just months after their first meeting, in March 1796. Napoleon scandalised his family by marrying a widow with children, but he was besotted. Although he had to leave his new bride two days after the wedding to lead a French army into Italy, he wrote to her continuously with gushing declarations of love. Every moment separates me further from you, my beloved, and every moment I have less energy to exist so far from you. You are the constant object of my thoughts. Notably, Josephine appears to have written far fewer letters to her husband, and those that do exist are much more tepid in tone. I am not satisfied with your last letter. It is cold as friendship, Napoleon replied to one. By that point, it appears Josephine had already taken up with the dashing young Hippolyte Charles, a hussar lieutenant, an aide-de-camp to General Charles Leclerc, Bonaparte's brother-in-law. By June, Josephine had rejoined Napoleon in Italy, but with her 23-year-old lover in tow. When Napoleon visited her Milan apartment in November 1796, only to find it empty, he started to become suspicious. One letter reveals his tumultuous emotions. I don't love you any more. On the contrary, I detest you. You are a vile, mean, beastly slut. You don't write to me at all. You don't love your husband. Soon, I hope, I will be holding you in my arms. Then I will cover you with a million hot kisses, burning like the equator. In March 1798, Napoleon learned of the affair, sending him into a great rage, although Josephine smoothed things over. 
Still, she continued the affair. Napoleon heard of it again during his Egypt campaign in July that year. He wrote to his brother discussing divorce, but that letter was intercepted and published in the London newspapers to the great delight of the British. Meanwhile, she wrote to her lover, Yes, my Hippolyta, my life is a constant torment. Only you can restore me to happiness. Tell me that you love me, that you love only me. By this point, however, Napoleon himself had taken a lover, Pauline Fouret, the wife of one his army officers. Having conquered Egypt, Napoleon returned to France in October 1799. After helping orchestrate the overthrow of the Directoire, he was given unlimited powers to head the government as First Consul. A month later, Josephine, after promising to end the affair with Charles, convinced her husband to call off the divorce. From then on, however, their relationship never recovered, and he began to flaunt his mistresses. Despite the other women, it seems Josephine continued to control his heart. My mistresses do not in the least engage my feelings. My mistress is power, he wrote in 1804, the same year the couple were crowned emperor and empress of the French. However, shortly before the coronation, Josephine discovered Napoleon in the bedroom of her lady-in-waiting, Elisabeth de Vaudet, and the arguments began again. Napoleon threatened divorce once more, this time on the grounds that Josephine hadn't produced an heir. The failure to produce an heir continued to trouble their marriage. And when Napoleon's mistress, Eleonore de Nuel, gave birth to his child in 1806, it was clear that the problem lay with the 43-year-old Josephine. When Napoleon's nephew and declared heir, Napoleon Charles Bonaparte, died at only four years old in 1807, Napoleon began drawing up a list of eligible princesses from around Europe. His marriage to Josephine was annulled, but at the divorce ceremony on 15 December 1809, the Kupler read statements of devotion to each author, confirming their mutual love. Napoleon declared, Far from ever finding cause for complaint, I can to the contrary only congratulate myself on the devotion and tenderness of my beloved wife. Napoleon married Marie-Louise of Austria by proxy on 11th March 1810, followed by a church ceremony a few weeks later. Almost exactly one year later, she gave birth to the long-awaited heir, Napoleon II. Josephine lived at the Chateau de Malmaison, near Paris, and stayed on good terms with her former husband. He would learn of her death by pneumonia in May 1814, while he was in his first exile in Elba. When he died in his last exile in St. Helena, his last words are reputed to have been, France, the army, head of the army, Josephine. Despite their multiple affairs, tempestuous arguments and public divorce, it seems the love between Napoleon and Josephine continued to endure.